Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday morning. This is a pajama teaching. My Bible mentor taught in his pajamas, so I can teach you my pajamas. Oatmeal. A little sea salt. One pack of sweetener. Blueberries. Yum. Hot oatmeal. I'm living on oatmeal and one meal a day. I'm losing weight. 197. First time I've been 197 in 20 years. Right to the word. Revelation. Get your Bible out. Turn to Revelation. Yes, I'm the spiritual teacher. First of all, I believe it's in Acts 26. It says, The Lord... It was predestined that the Lord come to Paul and make him a teacher, an apostle teacher, apostle teacher, prophet teacher, evangelist teacher, shepherd leader, feeder, elder teacher, the teacher of teachers. And that's what I am. Lord, Paul wasn't looking for it when he had his Damascus Road experience, and I wasn't looking for it when I had my Holy Spirit filling experience at the age of 30. And in two months here, I turned 75. 45 years I've been in my calling. I confess the Lord around the age of 10. I don't know the exact age. I can't remember. It's the first time I ever left home and slept in a strange bed at a Nazarene church camp. So... Almost 65 years, I've confessed the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Hallelujah. Can we go and do what the scripture tells us to do? Most believers don't. I'll leave it really general. Let's read the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. The revelation means spiritual. Um, I won't chase that rabbit. That's why I came to a locked moment in my brain when I said, uh. <laughs> the letter, the last letter in the New Testament in most Bibles is Revelation, written by John, who wrote one John, who wrote the Gospel of John. The revelation or the spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ, and I put Lord of Lord, King of Kings. The Gospel of John 18, 36, 37. Yes, I am a king. You say correctly, Pontius Pilate. But my kingdom is not from this realm or this world. That's what the Lord said. He didn't say, I've come to save the world. He said, I came, I was born for this purpose. And I came to bear witness to the truth. And you find the word truth there three times. And the last time Pontius Pilate asked the question, what is truth? Three times the word truth. That's major doctrine. I must have another bite of my opium before it gets cold. While I'm chewing, it gives you time to think of what I'm saying. Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings, which God gave unto him, John, to show to his servants, that's you and I, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his, says angel in King James, it's a messenger, of thy brethren the prophets. When, when John was going to fall down, on his knees and worship before the angel. He said, do it not. Worship God. Don't worship me. I'm of thy brethren, the prophets. This man was on earth at one time. And if you're of the brethren, and if you're talking about human beings or a group of human beings, prophets, okay, this man was not a created, or this messenger was not a created angelic being before humanity. Okay unto his servant John, who bear record of the spirit word of God and of the testimony of 
I add Lord Jesus Christ. Christ and Lord are titles. Jesus is the name. Give the Lord his deity. His headship is deity. Call him Lord. Lord Jesus. Baby Christians just call him Jesus. Mature, grown-up, placed Christians, responsible, call him Lord of their life. Lord Jesus. And of the things that he saw, speaking of John again, all the things that he saw. Bless, verse 3, we're reading Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they which hear the words of the, this prophecy and keep the things which are written. Paul makes point in third chapter of Ephesians. I have written, so when you read, are you reading the scriptures daily? Are you feeding yourself spiritually as you feed yourself naturally daily? Make the time in your busy life and schedule to read at least two to three to five minutes daily. Read the scripture if you're not with anybody, if you're all alone, while you feed your face at lunch. I used to do that in my work van. Eat lunch, read the word. It can be done. Verse 4, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Asia is mentioned again here if we get to the end of this Bible study or this reading. True witness. Here's my question back to you all. I want you to think about this. Why do you go to Rome? Why do you go to Jerusalem? Why do you go everywhere on the globe, planet Earth, to uh, put the pin in the map, this is where we should be, when the scripture tells you, in Asia. The seven churches that are in Asia are in the western half of Turkey. And you also can call it Asia Minor. Asia, Asia Major is in the center of Turkey and east to the Euphrates River. That's Asia. All the way over to India and China is called Asia. And the trade route came from there all the way going west into Europe. Okay? But here we are in seven locations, seven cities, seven churches in Asia, where the number two school is that Paul started. Uh, Tyrannus, I think that's how you say it. And some, for some reason, I think it was connected hard in the same building, connected to the synagogue. After being in the synagogue for three months or more, he took all those believers and disciples out of the synagogue and into the school where he taught for three years daily in Asia. That's my whole point. Asia is the name of this teaching. In Asia, Ephesus, school number two and the seven churches. This letter is to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Get into Asia Minor on the west half, and here's one for you. What town is the eighth church? Did you know that there's an eighth church? Think about it. If you want to know who the eighth church is, read the end of Colossians mentioned three times at the end. What's mentioned? Which of the seven churches of Revelation is mentioned three times at the end? Lady Osea. And it's even mentioned earlier than that. I think you get Lady Osea four times in the letter to the Colossians. And what does it instruct you to do at the end of, the, of Colossians? To read the eighth church's letter with the seventh church's letter, together in the same assembly. So if you're going to read them today and study them today, study them together. Study Lady Osea and Colossians together. 
Did you know you can do that today, 2,000 years later? Think on it. Sila. I'll explain it to you. The Ephesian letter is the base foundation circulation letter from school number two, where Paul taught for more than two years daily. Foundation circulation letter to the Christ anointed church. Lady Osea got that letter with their name put at the top of it because we have original manuscripts in historical museums today in Greek. And you read that letter, and in the first verse or the first two verses of Ephesians, it's left blank because it's duplicated. It is the base foundation circulation letter to all seven churches in Asia. And when you read Lady Osea, you're reading Ephesians. When you read Ephesians, you're reading Lady Osea, and you're supposed to read the eighth church, Colossians, with the seventh church's circulation letter. So when you read Ephesians and Colossians, you're reading Lady Osea and Colossians together like it tells you to do what you're supposed to do at the end of Colossians. Read them together and study them together. It's simple. And even in Revelation, we're not even studying one of John's, one of Paul's letters. We're studying John's letter. Same Lord Jesus Christ, same Holy Spirit word is speaking to John that called out and made Paul a minister. And I was made a minister just like Paul to see the word spiritually, Paul's writings and the New Testament 45 years ago. I wasn't looking to be a minister or a teacher of God's Bible or word, his spirit word, the eternal living word, the Bible, the only one book you need to read and study. Forget all these commentaries and these other, quote, Christian books written by Christian women and men. Read the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. I don't care what translation either, because if you really love God and you read and begin to study, the Holy Spirit will bring you to truth. You'll add other study Bibles to your favorite reading Bible. When you begin to study and not just read, and there's a whole difference between reading and studying, I'm telling you truth. I am the truth teacher eating oatmeal and blueberries right now. If I eat before you, you can eat before me. Hallelujah. As long as we talk about the spirit word, the truth of the scriptures. I don't care what's in your mouth as long as the spirit word's in your mouth. <laughs> I have to do an overview because I got less than a minute to go. Down to verse 4. In Asia, grace be. Then in the next three or four verses, him, his, him, him. Verse six, and have made us kings and priests unto God, X out and put L over the God, L, Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. There's two amens right here at the beginning. So be it, Selah, think on. Moment of silence. First amen is at six. Behold, I come, cometh with clouds. All right, every eye. And the second amen at the end of seven. Selah. I've got to end. i got 60 seconds here. To the end in eight. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the author and finisher. He's the creator and the judge. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Lord to come. Almighty. El, El Shaddai, mighty, almighty, okay? Word of God, testimony of Jesus Christ. He heard a great voice in red letters in Asia. The Lord said, make sure you get what you see. Write it down in a letter and send it to the seven churches in Asia or in Asia Minor, and they're named. Lady Osea being the last, and the eighth church is Colossians. Love you. Bye.